The Complaint Commissioner wants government to take action on the recently tabled ninth special report, which he said proves that a Seacouse Bay resident is entitled to justice after a decade of unresponsiveness from both governments. The report, entitled Falling Through the Chasms, highlighted a case brought to the Complaints Commissioner involving a female who was called Cora in the report to hide her identity along with her grandmother, both of whom stated they had made requests to government in 2000 for permission to reclaim an area of the seabed adjacent to their property on the Sea Cows Bay seashore line. According to George's report, Cora was informed in 2001 and then again in 2011 that her request had to await an approval development plan for the Seacouse Bay area. Georges stated that he questioned the Conservation and Fisheries Department about the Seacouse Bay development plan and was informed that they were unable to find any forward planning documents relating to the area. They were also unable to find any applications for reclamation in the Seacows Bay area, although the report said they did find a planning concept prepared by Smith Annenborg Associates dated back to January 2003. Furthermore, the report stated that the 3rd District Representative, who was Minister for Natural Resources and Labor at the time of Cora's request, had a strong personal interest from a political point of view in a harbor development project in the same area, and in his drive to achieve this goal, he bypassed and was allowed to bypass the established system for carrying on public business. The Commissioner concluded that any issues with the development plan should not have prevented government from handling the application made by the private citizens. In summary, Georges stated that his investigation found government at fault and recommended submission of the application to Cabinet for speedy approval, a full apology and full compensation. During the 2011 general elections, the then 3rd District NDP candidate Kevin Smith spoke heavily about the proposed Seacows Bay development project under the 3rd District representative Julian Fraser. It was stated that the project was taking place without persons' knowledge of it, including those that it would affect. I saw a story publish that said that there was a stop order on the project over there. But the way it was presented suggested that it was a private development. I don't have a problem with that. But then when asked the question in the House, the Minister of Communication and Works pointed out that there were $600,000 allocated for the project. And then the NDP government moved the money when they came in. So I'm confused as to who the project really for. I'm asking questions because I don't know. And the Physical Planning Act requires that persons who have an interest in the adjacent property in the surrounding area is given the right to make representation in writing. So, 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 now, my last name is Smith, but the name before my last name is Hodge. And we have five acres over there bound to the sea. So, 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 we need to know what's going on. Yeah. All of the property owners need to know what's going on. And the general public needs to know what's going on. Yeah. At a sitting of the House last April, Julian Fraser said as recently as January 2011, landowners were informed that the decision to be a part of the Seacouse Bay development was totally up to them. And according to the then Works Minister, the landowners were all in agreement to move ahead. More recently, a Virgin Islands News Online article carried a response from Julian Fraser to the Complaints Commissioner and his report. The article quoted Fraser as saying, Georges has neither the technical competence nor the historic vantage to evaluate the project. He added that while attempting to address an applicant's concern about the status of their application, the Commissioner felt the need to inject his own opinion as to the development itself and decided to mislead the public. Commissioner Georges held a press briefing at his Main Street office on Monday and said he stands by the opinions expressed in his report and he pleaded with government to do justly by the citizen in question. I, I would have to say the report speaks for itself. I investigate complaints impartially and I go where the evidence leads. While I'm not infallible, of course, and I couldn't therefore make mistakes like anyone else, Bad faith is not a matter of which I can be justly accused. I stand by the opinions which I expressed in the report and 
and I'm quite prepared to defend them. But I would also like to say that all of this must not distract from the basic fact that a citizen has been wrongly treated by her government. And the thing that I want to do most today is to use this opportunity to again plead with the government to do justly by this citizen. Deputy Premier Dr. Kedrick Pickering was questioned on the Complaints Commissioner's special report during last Monday evening's episode of NDP Radio. But when asked if he would respond to the caller, his response was, not at all. Now I don't know if Dr. Pickering wants to get into this tempest in a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, Ms. Not at all. Not at all. N not tonight. Not at all. Not, not at all. I think all. what is important to say that uh, the role of the complaints commissioner <clears throat> is exactly that, to investigate complaints from public officers in which they feel like they have not gotten uh, a proper response from, from the, the individuals who work within the system of government that they, and that the complaints commissioner is a constitutionally appointed position. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, he, he investigates complaints from the public against the government. Basically, that's, that's what his role is. And uh, there's a process and a protocol that, that he follows. And he has the constitutional right after he has done a report. If he doesn't think that satisfactory enough has been done to respond to the nature of the complaints, then the, 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 the process allows him to have the official complaint laid before the House. And once it is laid before the house, it becomes a public document. Mm -hmm. So that, that is one of the roles of the complaints commissioner. In other countries, it's called the ombudsman. ombudsman. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's part and parcel of a democratic society to ensure that there are checks and balances in the way government functions. According to the complaints commissioner, there are several individuals still awaiting word on their request to reclaim land near the seabed, and it is now up to government to act upon those requests.